Good morning. Welcome in. You're listening to the Morning Grind. K-A-Z-I 88.7 FM live from Austin, Texas. I'm okay. Dapper D. And yo, what's good? <laughs> Simply Courtney over there. It's your boy Simply Courtney. How y'all doing? Good morning. Salutations and greetings, y'all. Yeah, we ready. We ready to give y'all a great hump day. We got a, a nice guest coming in a little bit later. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk some news. We're gonna talk some yeah. sports. We're gonna yeah. talk some entertainment. Yeah, we're gonna talk a little education. Yeah, and then we'll take your calls. And we're going to talk about what y'all want to talk let me, about. Let me say it one time, just just for the one time. Okay. On this beautiful Warfield Wednesday. <laughs> I got to say it. We're going to shout yeah. out, boy. Y'all. He, 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 he uh, out right now. Yeah. He yeah. out, but on some good stuff, though. Ain't on negative stuff. Gallivant. Sometimes good. people be out and be on some negative stuff. Yeah. Or not negative, but not on the best of terms. But he out on some good stuff. Where Carmen San Diego type vibe. Carmen so, San Diego. So he gallivanting yeah. around yeah. the world. Yeah. So we got some topics, some things that we're going to get to. Uh, it... When you guys call, you're going to need that number. It is 512-836-2887. One more time. 512-836-2887. Okay. Hit them with the seven at the end. (laughs) (laughs) We got got to make sure they know how to call in. So some of the things we're going to get to today... um, uh, the Olympics. We got to talk Summer Olympics about viewership. I got a stat that I want to I want to hit you with a little bit later and get okay. get your opinion on that. Okay. Um, I got a would you rather kind of deal. Okay. I got I got a question. We gonna we gonna ask you, and uh, yeah, we 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 gonna have to hear from some of the people out there. We get our chat. But on. it's would you rather go on a date with this person? Or with that person, or have a third option of another event happen in your life. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to get to that. Um, if you wanted to be the first person to do something, what would you do? We're mm. going to come back. We, that's going to be one we're we going to talk about. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk a little sports. Okay. For those who are fan, we know that the number one draft pick, San Antonio Spurs, got it. Wimby. I got a little hypothetical there. Okay. With Wimby. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, hey, we're going to talk about some relationship stuff. I got a, I got a question. Mm. Like, if you was in a relationship, it's so simply Courtney. Yeah. My wife left me. Yeah. But I got to keep the model trains or whatever okay. is important to you. Okay. Did you win? So I want to know mm-hmm. what you keeping. I want to know from the listeners what they keeping. Yeah. Because whatever you keep, you see it as a win. That's a win. I got to know that. I got to know that. We're going to talk. Oh, we we know some of y'all out there on the roads. So we're going to give you a little bit of traffic. And then some of y'all out there this last week of of, of summer break. We got school starting up. Mm. <sighs> we just had back school night last night, man. Well, we're going to talk weather. Talk about it. For these last week. Yeah. This last week while Hunnets. they out there in it. Hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds. It's going to get ugly. We got, hey, I want, I want to know one other thing, too. Um, yeah. Are ghosts real, in your opinion, Man. or is it nonsense? We're gonna get to that. Ooh, we, got some we only got, we only we got, got some topics oh, yeah. today, yeah, y'all. Yeah. We, we gonna hit them. We gonna hit them. We em. might need y'all to call in too, because yeah. you know what? To be honest with you, I can't be the only opinion in the room. Yeah, y'all better, y'all better call in and let us know. And if they want to call in, what's that number? Five one two. Five one two. Eight three six. Eight three six. Two eight eight. Seven. Two eight eight seven. So we're gonna get off up into a mix. A little mix to start the day. Yeah, because they, said, they said in this with more music. Yeah, we got to hit them with it. They we said more music because we be talking a lot when we be on here, brother. <laughs> Man, we like to talk. No, the people like to talk. No doubt. That's, why, that's, why, they call the that's why they call That's why they listen. Want. So we will get into it. I'm Dapper D. That's Simply Courtney. Yeah. This is the morning grind. I'm ready. We appreciate you guys. Now, let's get to some good stuff. And I'm dancing, too. It's hump day. Back to it. Yeah. The morning grind. Yeah. Dapper D simply court me on Wednesday. On the MIC. Hump day. At the KA. We got we gotta be the wind behind these people's right. backs to yeah. get them through the rest of the week. Yeah. That's 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 a tall order. Do you feel that pressure? I'm with it though. Okay. I'm I'm, built I, was for trying, it. I was trying to put that pressure on you. I'm built for it, man. Yeah, I see that. I see that. You, My middle name is Diamond. You didn't even hesitate. Mm-mm. I thought I had them, people. So, we the, the first thing, Olympics. Mm-hmm. According to a recent survey, 59% of employed Americans plan to watch the 2024 Summer Olympics. Mm-hmm. 27 million people in the U.S. plan to miss work to watch the Olympics. Respect. You all right with that? Yeah, go for it. I mean... It's 13 days or something like that, though. So I'm like, what is that? Does that mean they're missing one day? I know. Because if you miss a day or let's say, you, I don't know, you miss a shift or you call in yeah. 
for a whole week. I mean, I don't know. I don't think anybody's missing a full week of work to watch the Olympics, but I could be wrong. Well, we are notorious. For those who don't know, we are one of the one of the countries that take the least amount of vacation Correct. and time off. Correct. So if this is what's important to us, mm-hmm. this March Madness, you know, if these are the type of things that people will finally take that time off, okay. So be it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what they got to do. Instead of getting to the end where they got that user lose time. I know, and then it gotta, doesn't roll over. <laughs> and then know it. So, so now they got to, we, we got to do something. <laughs> I they take all these forced vacations at the end of the, <laughs> the at the end of the quarter. That's the wildest thing. And, and you know everybody's doing it. Taking them uncomfortable vacations. Uh, we we going up. Uh, we we going. The we whole going? office look like it's just tumbleweed flowing through, <laughs> echoes, <sighs> which which brings me to the other point. Mm-hmm. If the office was as empty as I said, and you heard a little bump. When you was in there, because you you don't care about the Olympics, you the one that went to work. The rest of us took this time off, mm-hmm. but you you all up in there. Mm-hmm. It's late. You working late, matter mm-hmm. of fact. It's a little dark. I'm covering two people's shifts. Yeah, but you hear a bump. Mm-hmm. How do you feel? Are ghosts real in your opinion, or is it nonsense? Man, that is a great question. I think personally, ghosts are real. But here's the thing: I haven't experienced any kind of paranormal stuff myself. Right. My mom and my late sister, they both experienced stuff. In the house that we stayed in oh. uh, on the east side, um, they both had moments where they felt or they saw something. Right. Me, personally, I always tell people about I tell the story a lot, is that I stayed in that house by myself longer than anybody else. Right. I was up in the middle of the night because I was a teenager, whatever, and I never saw anything, never felt anything, and okay. I never had any moments where I felt uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, you know, as, as when you're by yourself, you have that, that, that feeling where you're like, Something feels weird, you yes, know. Yes, but that's just—I could be in here and have that feeling, and yeah. so and maybe something is going on. That's well, that's you are in here, and I feel something weird. Just like See you what said, I'm, I'm like, ah, it's th- I'd be this in the bathroom here. by myself. And I feel something <laughs> weird. You know, that could have went in a different direction. It could have. Seven forty-seven, yeah. Courtney. Is how you gonna do yourself? No, then we'll do that at seven forty-seven tonight when we're not on the mic. Then, then I can say that. Yeah, you, okay, you can go but, all in. But nah, man, I don't know, dude. Like, I don't have any kind of proof myself. But at yeah. the same time, I believe that there are stuff. There's stuff. In this world that is inexplicable, unexplainable, mm-hmm. and to have that kind of uh, this conclusivity of no, there's nothing. I think that you're just discounting the I fact agree. that there's so many different things about being compelled and feeling um, enthralled. To tr- why am I throwing all these dang dictionary words? Hey, out? You, you, you had you had to, a cup of Joe. You had, you had maybe so. Get you going I think today? having to drive through all that traffic this morning woke me up in a way. But anyways, I just I I, I believe. It. I believe there's stuff that's unseen that is out in this world. Okay, we have someone on the line. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, I just you mentioned something about that. Did you mention something about uh, ghosts? My grandma always taught me this. You ain't got it, ghosts don't walk. You don't have to worry about ghosts. You got to worry about the living. That's the truth. <laughs> yep. That is the truth. Yep. Grandma, grandma was, sh- hey, she ain't lying. <laughs> Spot on. That, I like that. I mean, I mean, think about. I mean, really think about it. Well, you know, whether they be picked them in movies and all how ghosts and stuff on. Ghosts could be really trying to tell you something. It's the living we got to worry about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yep. I appreciate that. You're right, and I also appreciate you sharing what Grandma said. It is not lost on these ears over here. Hey, where you calling in from? Hey, I'm calling in from that station. Oh, okay. Hey. Well, look, we appreciate you calling in. Have a good one. Yeah, no, I appreciate y'all. Y'all have a great. Yes, <laughs> okay, look. Mm-hmm. Grandma is out there dropping jewels. Hey, gran- Grandma, Grandpa out there. See, we listening. Yeah. It may not seem like it at the time, <laughs> but, it, you know, I, I hope his grandmother's still in the land of the living and and she's still dropping jewels like that. If not, rest in peace and thank you for the knowledge that you passed on. Yeah. Keeping him with that ear to the street. Yeah. <laughs> Watching them people. You got you got to look over that shoulder. You do. For though. the living. <laughs> That's what you need to be. They'll come and get you. I just never know. I mean, I always try not to ever feel like I know everything about it. So I'm like, man, just because I ain't experienced it. But people that I know and love, they've experienced it. I'm like. Maybe there's something going on there, you know? I had it. Uh, we had a weird one. This is one. There was, this, I guess, a kid that had passed away in the house that we were in. Yeah. And he had a knack for rummaging through my sister's stuff. And so 
she would come to her room and find like her purse turned over. What? And like her purse like rummaged through yeah. on the ground. And there would be moments too where she'd be like, let's say there's a hallway where our living room was. Mm-hmm. She would be positioned looking down the hallway and she'd see something blur from like the bathroom across the hallway to her room. The wildest thing was me and her temporary, we had switched rooms. So it would always go to her room, whatever room was hers, yeah. and it would avoid mine. And so it was always this weird situation where I was there, I never saw anything, mm-hmm. and it never involved itself with where I was at. Oh. Instead, of like maybe it liked women, or yeah. maybe it was you know feeling safe around them, or whatever it was. Yeah. Somebody that reminded him of his mom, whatever. But I just know that like yeah, I never experienced anything, and I was in that house by myself twenty four seven. You know, we got someone on the line. Good morning. You're live on the air. Good morning. This is Doug. Dapper Deep. What's up? What's up? I got Simply Courtney in here with me. Simply Courtney. Good morning. And to your guests. Y'all talking about spirit? Good morning. If, Good morning. if, if, if a person spirit. believes that it's real, we, we more specifically said ghost, but... Uh, yeah, we're potato, talking about ghosts. Potato, tomato, tomato. But this one was ghost, though. And what about uh, demonic spirit? Hey, if that's, if that's, if that's what they working with... Well, this is whatever whatever you want to talk about. What do you want to talk about? Well, the the situation is uh, your body is most susceptible at a certain peak of the moment, it, early in the morning. Uh-huh. You you can uh, they seem to interact around about the three or two o'clock vessel, uh, moment mm-hmm. that you're not in control of your your body, so they can take control. Mm-hmm. So there are demons out there, and yes, that's the presence of spirits out there also. Mm-hmm. I know that I was dealing with. Uh, you probably, there would be big demonic attacks. Uh-huh. So the bottom line, either you can you can uh, you can have scratches, bite marks, mm-hmm. everything on. But I I would used to play. I had my spiritual music on, and I had my Christian radio station on, and and I know that they were there. You could feel the presence of the air. And one three o'clock in the morning, I woke straight up and I looked straight at the restroom door, and I'm having my. Uh, uh, and I'm having uh, my concern, and I looked at it and I said, something is standing right there in front of the restroom door. Mm-hmm. And it, by the, when I woke up, it said, mm, and like it bagged back. And in the presence, I got up and I anointed my house. I, I, I sung uh, a spiritual song. I went from room to room. And I said, a blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Now I'm recording this, Okay. I'm recording it and forgot I was recording it in the presence. And so I finally listened to the recording. I would hear stuff in the, the background. Yeah. And as I was singing Blessed Assurance, it's, it's from the restroom door at the very end of the tape. He said, my Satan don't bless a damn. Whoa. So the demonic spirits are real. Yeah. And they can put fear in your heart. Mm-hmm. You definitely have to cling on to Jesus because even the, the ministers... The, the, the man of God, some of them don't even know how to come up against it. Mm. And they're too fearful. And, and see, Satan knows who, who God's children are. Oh, so now, that, now, we only have 60 seconds left. It, what? How could you do that, though? Like, could you... Could you see the resume of your your preacher and be like, man, you straight you straight out of seminary. You ain't got the time out here. Oh, I mean, because you brought up a point. What if, what if they ain't got them, that skill set? If they don't have the skill set, they they're not going to be there. Because I've called several of them mm-hmm. to bless to yeah. come in in my house. They don't they don't know that area of expertise. And yeah. you come to a point that you have to fight these things off yourself. So you need to get into the Word of God. You need to study and be around people who know what's going on. Yeah. So they are spiritual attacks. Whether mm-hmm. you want to say a ghost or you know, yeah. their presence is real. You can feel it when it comes into the room. Hey, thanks for calling in, man. Yeah, dro- thank you. She dropped she dropped some nuggets on us and that mm-hmm. was some some stuff I want to I want to think about too. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to go into uh, another quick topic here. Uh, who would you want to go on a date with? Simply Courtney, Beyonce, or Jennifer Lo- Lopez? Or what's your favorite basketball team? Spurs. Or the San Antonio Spurs will win the NBA championship. If you had to pick. The Spurs won the championship. 
<laughs> he didn't even hesitate. Because all the women you just named are married. I don't want to date no married woman. Okay, this is the hypothetical. They, 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 that's they why they're going on a date. Yeah, they Am single. I dating this person? This person is like, this is a date. And nope. This is like, there's this, interest. this is my woman. No, they're interested. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Still the person. They, they were in town. <laughs> Wait, they were in town <laughs> in Austin. Uh-huh. Caught your stand up. Uh-huh. Kind of thought you was cute. Heck yeah. Unfortunately, uh-huh. one caught you on Tuesday, one caught you on Wednesday. It's Thursday. You got to pick. And you heard that both want to go out with you. Right. You got to prepare. You know the Instagram photo. But now that, that you have all that. Straight up. What's your answer? Spurs won championship. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real, man. Serious. And I'm tr- I swear to God. Listen, radio people, I swear to God, I am not anti-love relationship or anything like that. Right. I just think that like mentally where I'm at right now, I don't care. Like I just... Relationships are dope. Yeah. And I think it's cool to have your spouse and your significant other support you and all that. Yeah. But man, I just I don't know, man. I don't know. Like it's I wish I had a better explanation for it right yeah. now. But it's not that like women are annoying me right now. <laughs> what you got against love? I ain't got nothing to <laughs> hurt you, Carla. I know, right? I hurt you. I need hey, a hug. Hey, Carla. Carla. So if you can, if you can help <laughs> If you can help mend a broken heart. But, but, but I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just in such a, like, I'm in a vibe right now. Yeah. You know, and it's so cool when you see um, what you can do. Like, when you focus in oh, on yourself. I have been there. And even going through stuff and being able to focus in on your stuff and, like, not have to explain stuff every so often. And I just, I think that I've been in the wrong situations. Yeah. And because of that, I am like, yo, I'm, I'm figuring my stuff out first. Mm-hmm. Before I involve anybody else. No, I think that's. I think it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm in. I'm in a good thing right now. Yeah. And it was me in that space that you're in right now. Yeah. I was in that space then. Wasn't looking for it. Yep. I liked. I liked the groove that I had going. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's the last thing I was thinking about was yeah. love and and, and yeah. locking it down. And it just kind of snuck up on me at that moment. Mm-hmm. But that a lot got done. Like, That's where I'm at, man. I was, I was very. I productive. just think if I think if this was like maybe ten years ago, I'd have been like, yeah, man. Uh, uh, I probably would have said Beyonce. I don't. No, that's Cap. I'd have said J Lo. Yeah. Because after she walked away in that scene on um, on 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 on, on uh, uh, what's the dang snake movie, man? Anaconda. Dang. Oh, oh, oh. Why can't I remember words? Anaconda. So there's a scene on Anaconda for those of y'all that in the know. I don't even know if we had the right people listening right now. Right. But either way. If you're into backsides, yeah. I'm going to say it cleanly, but mm-hmm. dirty at the same time. Yeah. If you're into backsides, boogieing on camera, yeah. watch Anaconda and probably the scene where she walks away from the phone or the computer. You're welcome. Oh, okay. Homie, we, we as a football, as a basketball team, I remember my basketball, my summer basketball uh, camp, mm-hmm. every like Tuesday or so, we'd go to the movies to go to the cheap dollar movies. Yeah. We saw Anaconda in movies, dog. Oh. All of us little preteen and teenage boys saw that scene. Yeah. And it was one of the most unifying moments ever. Not on the court, not on the field, not not <laughs> running the hill, Bundy Hill, south of Bundy Hill on the side of Gibbons Park. Yeah. For my old Austin people, you know what Bundy Hill is. I know that hill. Anyways, we were at the theater that scene happened, and we all was just like, "Yo!" It was yep. it was such a unifying moment because we all saw it at the same time, and we all reacted as if we all had the scene at the same time, and so we're looking at each other, confirming and corroborating that we all saw what we saw. Yeah, it, it, you know when you're in that moment, like, did Man. you see that? But Man. everybody saw it, Homie, but you then, still got to ask the question. And then the rest of the world caught on and got to see it, and it was just a beautiful thing. But that's when you know it it, it actually happened. The we thing was thing. I, like your eyes ain't, aren't believing what no. you saw. Boy, so I want to know, did boy, your eyes boy. see what my eyes saw? Boy, we saw it. Because I thought, okay, I thought I had. All right. That scene launched the career, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> and and pull the team together. Now, boy. you know, there won't be a movie made. You know, like there's Remember the Titans. Yeah. You know, there's all that. Yeah. Your, t- your team ain't getting a movie because nope. of the Anaconda scene, though. Straight up. Okay. I just want you to make sure you're okay. But that scene that. got a movie, though. But it pulled your team Whole together career. just like those other movies. Whole career of music and acting. Yeah. Can't sing a lick, can't carry a tune in a bucket. But got some got some gold and or platinum. I, I think platinum. She probably got on, a platinum on the on wall. She probably at her crib. Straight up. Got nominated for some stuff. Shout out to Santi. So here's the other. <laughs> <laughs> 
Be right here. I'm just saying, man. <laughs> I, ever since I heard that that was a shot these vocals, I'm like, were, any, were Jennifer Lopez's vocals ever involved? But yeah. go for it. We got this next topic. If you wanted to be the first person to do something, what would you do? Yeah. What would it be? The mm. first person. And I haven't did it before. Are we talking about like 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 does like a world record or something like that count? Could be. I'll say the thing I tried to do and I fell. I didn't fail. I just gave up because I got older. I tried to make the world's biggest tape ball. Oh. This is the thing I really tried to do. Like anybody that knows my history knows about the tape ball that I did. Yeah. I did a tape ball for about three years, I think. Yeah. I, started, I did. I started from a, I then started in eighth grade. Yeah. And I went all the way until I was like, and I'd pick up on it every so often, but eighth grade all the way up until probably about a. Might have been close to a freshman in college or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I would stop. I'd start and stop. It got to the size of a basketball. Wow. It was heavy, but it was all completely mask and tape. And I'm right, took it to my job. And my original plan was to have my summer campers continue it so we'd all get the record together. But I realized that I had to pay for that tape. Oh. See, when I was in eighth grade, I was still in that tape. <laughs> Surprise. I was still in the tape, so yeah. I didn't pay for it. Yeah. But when I hit ninth grade, I had to start paying for it. In the tenth grade, I was paying for it. That changes And time. I was like, man, I'm going to buy some masks and tape. Yeah. Look, put on, man, I'm good. You know, and so, so the motivation changed. The motivation changed. It had to come out of your pocket. I'm scared that I just mentioned that and now somebody's going to get the idea oh. to do it. And I would be so mad to see that record because I look for it. Truth be told, every once in a while, I go on the internet and I look to see if there's a record for the largest mask. And ball tape, yeah, it's still not out there. Oh, so I still could do it, but man, it took so long to get you, it to you're basketball behind. size. You're behind now, it's gone. Somebody by the way. is uh, about four minutes ahead of you right now. That they, thing they, is, they don't got to start it. It is in the landfill waiting to scare the living bejesus out of somebody. I promise you, somebody's like, <laughs> what, what is, is this mess? They're gonna open it, it's just nothing but basketball. Yeah, now there must be. Let, let, let me get another layer off. There must be something on the inside. No, nope, not yet. Hold on. Let me. Get, <laughs> no. Like, like maybe this is packaging because oh, inside there's you. a very rare diamond. Yes. So let me take another layer. No, oh, my God. Another, okay. Let me oh, see. Oh, right, God. This. Okay. If you were Wimby's height, for mm-hmm. those who don't know, Victor Wimbyama, number one draft pick for San Antonio Spurs. Because we have a Spurs fan here. You saw what he picked there. He's nine foot three. If you were Wimby's height and Wimby was your height, Who's winning in a one versus one? Uh, me. <gasps> Why? Because I'm Wimby's height. I'm seven foot six. I didn't say you had a skill. Don't matter. I'm seven six. Okay. So if you basketball. had that. Oh, wait, wait. One v one was it a fight or is no. it a basketball? Not basketball. I assume basketball. Well, I want. You have his height. Yes. I didn't say you had his genetics. Do you understand? So maybe he can jump higher Listen, than you. I'm going I'm to I'm break it down for you. Okay. If I was, he's seven, they say seven five. Yeah. Do you understand if I was seven five, I'd be president of the United States right now? No. Who gonna tell me no? We ain't modifying the White House. For Who you? gonna tell me no? Uh, the the construction workers. Let me tell you the something. The American budget. I am six foot three, mm-hmm. and to be honest with you, if I was three inches taller, it'd be some problems around here. <laughs> I'm just being real. I, like, like they talk about being a superhero. Yeah. And they'd be like, what if you had powers and stuff like that? Do you understand the Lord didn't let me be six foot eight for a reason? Yeah. There's some people. You, you would have used your powers for evil. For evil. Oh, okay. Straight up. Now, it's all right. We need, look, we need, just like you need evil ghosts, mm-hmm. we need good ghosts. I'm taking people's hats and putting them on the top of flagpoles. Oh, yeah. That's, that's pretty bad. I'm sticking my leg in a revolving door and just letting it sit still, making a regular dough. Oh. I am, you know what? I'm on the escalator, right? You know, you have the escalators. One goes up, one goes down. Yeah. I'm slapping people in the back of the head on if, the escalator from if, three if, rows up. If you're in the grocery store and you see a little old lady trying to get this meatball sauce from mm-hmm, the top shelf mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with that six eight, you helping her? Oh wow! I just, I want this sauce. <gasps> so you're gonna take it off mine and leave her there and, and, and walk night. off with yours? That night. Uh, I'm going in two steps too. <laughs> Cause you imagine trying to stop me? She, I'm just gonna she step may over. Try. She I'm gonna try gonna to keep over. the shins. Stepping over. In the shins. I got 15 inches of shin. You gonna have? You gonna? I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna feel it. <laughs> Grandma, I, I'm sorry. I, hopefully that doesn't happen. I'm dressing in the Slender Man suit and going outside the the, the houses of people in the middle of the night <laughs> and just dancing. <laughs> And then making sure that only they see it. Then when they try to tell people about, there was Slender Man out. And they were like, no, it nobody wasn't. saw it. No, it wasn't. You made that up. You tripping? Do you think 
there will ever be something resembling human consciousness to emerge from technology, similar mm-hmm. to an android mm-hmm. like Data from Star Trek, if mm-hmm. you remember. And if so, should it be allowed to play in the NBA? Oh, that's a good question. So we're talking about sentience here. Um, and we're not talking about the emergence where they're all together like a hive mind. We're talking about just one specific body, android, whatever. Yes. No. Oh. No. But the key was allowing Data to feel like he was part of everything. This, we, we didn't hold nothing back. We had those deep conversations with them to make sure he could understand. And you're going to hold them that against him. This is the Oscar Pistorius argument. This is the um, oh, South yeah. African uh, yeah, sprinter amputee? that had the carbon fiber leg things or whatever it was. Yes, sir. And they were saying that like he had an unfair advantage because the carbon fiber or whatever it was were springy or whatnot. And me personally, I don't necessarily think it was wrong that they took him out. I did think he should have. I don't know. I don't know. I think if he would have had like a different set of legs, it's so messed up. This, this sounds, uh, 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 what do you call it, ableist, I guess, I think of the term. But those things did spring him forward. Oh. Whereas everybody else didn't have spring. I know Cat Williams famously made the poor little tink tink. Routine. <laughs> he He's talking the dude that ain't got no legs. That got an advantage. The dude that, that run on paper, bit paper clips got, got an advantage. I'm like, he did though. Now with this android, this android don't have the ability to get tired. It doesn't get old. It doesn't yeah. get hurt. Yeah. It doesn't have to deal with like having a family and being stressed oh. out. It doesn't have anxiety. It doesn't have all these things that a human being does. This world was made for human beings. Now if we're gonna do the android thing. Just make a whole android league. And I know where this slippery slope goes somewhat. Yeah. People immediately try to go to the gender stuff. But I say, see, those are still people. Mm-hmm. And me personally, I'm, I'm a, I say don't air equality. I say let everybody play everything. Oh. That's how I feel. Okay. Let everybody play everything with everyone. Yeah. Go for it. You do know he was, so he was the only one. And he's like the test. So we can't make others yet. Mm-hmm. And they all have different experiences I appreciate, though, that you believe in equal opportunity mm-hmm. for all. Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to stay on the Olympics. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the three versus three. three yeah, on three we was messed in up the on that. We, we dropped the ball. So who should we have sent for our three on three teams? James Olympics? Harden. Okay. By himself. <laughs> what? To take on three people, brother? Yeah. You think he's a superhuman? He'd win every game 61 to 60. Well, he wouldn't have to pass the ball. Nope. He can get them shots He wasn't going to pass anyway. He never seen a shot he didn't like. Facts. And he's 6'6". Six, six. He's got enough moves in his bag mm-hmm. that he's going to get open every possession. Every time. Okay. I'll allow it. Yeah. <laughs> but we messed up, though. Like, like uh, What's that? We messed up. With who we sent. Yes. Yeah. No disrespect to Jimmer for that. I get it. You know, Jimmer. But, man, dog, listen. Dang. Kevin Durr. Rant. La Bron James. It doesn't even matter who the third person is on that list. Who do you know is going to beat Kevin Durant and LeBron James first and foremost? Man, we could put me out there and we'd still win. Courtney, this is what you're going to do. This is my LeBron James. Wait, a six foot eight Courtney? No, six foot three Courtney who looks oh, like okay. what I look like right now. Okay. Man, I'd have a warm up suit with no uniform on underneath <laughs> it. I wouldn't <laughs> I'd be out there like you ain't gonna like warm up for what? Yeah. Kevin Durant, LeBron James, simply Courtney. Simply C. We winning. Yeah. But my whole thing is that if we're gonna beat the best, if we're gonna be the best, not beat the best, we're gonna be the best, we gotta send our best out there. And I get it that that three on three team, they probably had won some tournaments or whatever it was. They they did all the FIBA qualifying stuff. Because you have to play all these different sanks and events in order to qualify for the, a chance to play at the Olympics, which we got eighth place, by the way. Uh, uh, USA. And so we'd have to have some guys that can put it together. Now, you know what my answer to this whole thing is? It's okay. Ice Cube. Oh. Ice Cube's 3-3. Three, three. Now, he has to follow the rules and get into those FIBA, whatever it is, and put whoever his champions are. So he has to figure his schedule out. Or he has to have, for the Olympic year, a whole year where those guys that are, I guess, maybe a team of six or whatever it is, and they figure out whatever it is. Cause I think the teams are four or five because they have to have alternates. Yeah. You have those dudes, and their sole focus is to prepare for the Olympics. Yeah. And so we have 2024, I guess we're 2024 now, 2028, that he has to start in probably 2026 or whatever it is, that process of vetting with the um, end goal 
of having the best three players play for the United States in the Olympics. If he does it that way, nobody's going to hold anything against him. Now, does he want to do it that way is the question because it's going to look a little different. There is no four-point shot. And no disrespect, I love big three, but there's no four-point shot. Yeah. All of that trash talking is out the window. Mm-hmm. You can talk between the lines, but all that, sh- that showboating and stuff like that, you can showboat to an extent, but there's something that you – I don't know. There's the spirit of competition, and I'm not saying that what Big 3 does is wrong because it's not, but there are some things that they won't be able to do on the Olympic stage. I don't want them to, like, change up their, their – like, like if you're a, a very expressive player, yeah. I don't want you to not be an expressive player, but if you watch the Olympics and you watch how our United States men's basketball team plays, yeah, if you watch how they play right now versus how they play during the NBA 82-game season – it's not necessarily night and day, but it's like day and afternoon. Yeah, it's a more respectful game. Yeah, you, you tell you could tell they are focusing on teamwork. Right, they're team USA. Right. They're they're trying. Um, they, I I have seen a little more of the demonstrative stuff. You know, like when LeBron gets gets fouled, he still he does, does his little a, shoulder shrug. I think that's cool shrug. because he's he's doing it and he ain't in nobody's face though. Yep, yep. And, and he he, look, he looks over at his bench. He's talking to his when bench. He he's it. warming himself up. Yeah. And I think there's there's levels to this. I'm not saying that the big three was the hood league and nothing like that. Yeah. But there's certain things that fly over there that aren't gonna fly with the Olympic committee. Oh, there was a player that came over and got into a, a pushing and shoving with match Gary with Coach Gary Payton. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yeah, first of all, G P might not even be able to be on the sideline. Yeah, you don't want you don't you want to do so. that's Oakland's finest right Oakland there. Oakland right there. Shout out to GP. Yeah, the same. glove. Bay Area Man. Which guy from the show Friends mm-hmm. could you take on in a fight? All of them. Joey Chandler or Ross? All of them. You only gotta pick one. Which one are you gonna fight? Ross. <laughs> I don't even know who that is, but I'm pretty sure it's that's David the, That's Swimmer. the one with the dark hit. Yeah, that guy. See, I got it. Yeah. I know some stuff. Yeah, I see that. If you just had to cast a living single, I'd have said draw, because none of both of those dudes could fight. No, no. Courtney, when you're at the barbershop, mm-hmm. you going to admit that you watch Friends then? Because yeah. you came with that quick. Yeah, I will. All right. You, 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 you got to be able to throw hands, you know. I'm right. joking. Let me so, stop. So here's Let me thing. stop playing that tough I, guy role I, for I a wanna, second. I want to remind everybody what we got here. Yeah. So he ain't looking for love. No. Nah. He's walking around, focusing on what he's doing. And trees. But he got a lot of time to be caught up on friends. And trees. Something tells me you sitting alone at the crib. Oh, that's peaceful. In front, with a, with a cereal bowl in front of you. Oh, that's peaceful. And you watching friends. That's peaceful. Okay. That sounds like a good night. I'm not judging. I just, you I just where want, I'm at? this is where I think you at. You see where I'm at? That's <laughs> peaceful. I don't want to see it. You just described peace. I'm just saying. It just Tranquil. seemed like it. Watch the voice. Peace and tranquility. Brother, I was I was walking through Ikea the other day. Let me yeah. tell you how I got the right one. Talk to me. And the first thing we came across was a couple bowls, and she held it up, and she was like, hey, new cereal bowl? Uh, <laughs> what? Man. man, that's how I know I got the right see, one. See, that's the type of stuff she that She thinking I, about me. See, we might have to do a date. It <laughs> might be Ikea. I just got, I'm going to be just listening. Yeah. That might be it. Be like, what you think of that? Oh, but that, but that, but that, but that. Okay, go <laughs> Take on. notes. Yeah, because like I, I'm right. telling you, bro, I'm that's, at the practicality now. I'm that's what we. That's where we at. I'm when it comes practical. to fellas, yeah, we want to know that she knows who you are. Mm-hmm. She's not trying to change that. You mm-hmm. could be you, and mm-hmm. that's when that relationship thrives. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, we get caught in the stuff, and they want to change you. And I want to be in a spot too where I'm not in a spot where. I don't need to change. Yeah. I do need to change. That's part of where I'm at right now. But I need there are some things that I fundamentally need to change. And so in because everyone, of that, but the essence of you, we can't take that. No, nah, the essence, I'm cool with. Okay, but there's things that I gotta yeah, finish yeah, and yeah. I gotta work on before I put that on somebody else. I'm putting it on myself. We're always yeah. it's called an edge up. True. You know, with this, with this, we got little scragglies we could tighten up here right, and there. Right. But you ain't messing with the whole body of hair. No. We ain't trying to do that. Um, if you got one billion dollars to Ooh. not be a fan of the Spurs anymore, because we know you're a fan of the Spurs, Let's go. would you take the money or remain a fan of the team? One billion, B as in Bravo, one Ooh, billion dollars Ooh. to not be a fan of the Spurs anymore. Do I have to be a fan of somebody else? Like, how does this work? I just get a billion dollars because I mean the answer is I'm taking a billion dollars. Oh. And I'm gonna lie, because um, <laughs> I'm gonna do what I want, man. So you, you're gonna sneak around and oh, you know, be real with you. If you told me not to do something for a billion dollars, I would just not do the thing. 
you, so you think cold turkey, you could just drop this yes. purse? For a billion, I can do anything for a billion dollars. You know, for as long as you have that money or a representation of the money, you yeah. know, we check in your Google history. Yeah, so don't go we, for don't it. We check in the box score. You can have the, der- the the deaf turtle. You know the deaf turtle analogy where they say the turtle is always on his way, and if it touches you, you die. Yeah, but you you get the blah 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 as long as you just like you get a billion dollars, but you got a deaf turtle after you. Yeah, so you have the money for as long as you can avoid the turtle. Keep it moving. Yeah, I, I would be just fine. Okay, man. So, so you're layered. Man, I'm just saying, like a billion dollars is a billion dollars. Yeah, brother. This this is almost like you asking me if I was seven foot six. The same things are gonna happen. <laughs> if I'm seven six or I'm a billionaire, yeah, it really doesn't change. To be honest with you, if I'm a billionaire, I might get that leg lengthening sur- uh, surgery <laughs> and just make myself seven six for the heck of it. Like I might be seven <laughs> six for a few weeks out of the year, and then I'll bring it down back to six foot three for the other weeks of the year. <laughs> like, man, so, Courtney, you so you're messing change. with us? Yeah, I'll be messing with y'all. Be confused. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all caught me last summer. That was my summer height. I'm just telling you. First during thing the I'm winter, buying, winter, mm-hmm. I'm back to short. Not the first thing. This is incorrect. The second thing I'm buying, if I uh, win, I'm not gonna say if win, I become police chief and billionaire. Oh, no. become <laughs> Don't do it, people. I'm getting a giraffe. <laughs> Anybody that knows me knows I love giraffes. I'm gonna have a single story house with a giraffe in the back. You gonna come to the house? It's gonna be a giraffe staring at you. Hey, do you know who Yu-Gi-Oh is? <laughs> I have no idea who that is. You know, Yu-Gi-Oh I know is. it's a card game, though, right? It it's a little little anime inspired. Yeah, giraffes. Yeah. So I was just <laughs> a giraffe. I Wait. just want eighty-eight point seven. All of our listeners to understand. Simply, Courtney will own a giraffe before he's done. Go ahead, though. Yu-Gi-Oh. Well, Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh. So it's a trading card game. Yeah. And it's a Japanese manga series, uh-huh. and it's written there. Yeah. But it's a young boy with an affinity for games who solves the ancient millennial puzzle. Yeah. Okay, so this is after your time frame, because it started back in 96, and it had a run through. I wasn't even alive in 96. Man, it's not, look at this guy. <laughs> I was just born in 2001. So what are you talking young, about? No, so I'm young. But, okay, uh-huh. so then who would be a better spades partner? Gambit from X Men or Yu Gi Oh? I don't know who Yu Gi Oh is. So I'm going with Gambit because that dude is from the French Quarter. <laughs> that man is from New Orleans. Did you go see Deadpool and Wolverine? Not yet. yet. I heard okay. it's crazy. No spoilers. Though. No spoilers. I think it's... me and the kiddos are going to go see that. Who's paying? Uh, I'm going to try to get my son to play. <laughs> he just got a hundred dollars, man. I'm going to see if I can just. See if I can be like, hey, man, you remember I said you owe me and all that? And yeah. You said you owed me too. Calling one of them favors real quick. No, it's fine. I mean, if I let my my oldest pay for anything, she's gonna go buy me an RV. She just don't have enough money yet. But, but she gonna get it though. She says she yeah, she, she ready to break open her piggy bank now. Uh-huh. She don't know the the, the, the cost, <laughs> but she thinks she can get it. Man, so I said no, nah, not not yet. Don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. We gonna we gonna hold. Did she break the piggy bank open? Is she a drop it on the ground type person, or is she methodically removed oh, the little bottom methodical. thing? Yeah, I think she's oh. methodical. Yeah, I think. What what are what are the two NBA expansion teams? Uh, we're probably gonna go Las Vegas, and I think Seattle makes yeah, more sense. I think you gotta go back. They have to go back to Seattle and redo the wrong. I pray, but I think they won't let them. But I pray that we get the Sonics back. Yeah. Uh, Las Vegas is an interesting one because they have they have the least amount of need, in my opinion, for a team. Mm-hmm. But it just makes more sense. Okay. Ask them too. I want to know what they think. Hey, you live on the air. We, we don't have much time, but uh, what's up? Good morning. Good morning. Yes, yeah, so this is Ronnie Jackson over at Jackson Barbershop. I'm supposed to have an interview this morning advertising uh, free haircuts on Saturday. I mean Sunday. Nice. Uh, yeah. 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 I was just trying to make sure because they. We they got you. Some- it's your weather. And joining us today, we have Mr. Jackson. Are you in the building? Yes, sir. I'm in the building. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing good, sir. I'm doing good. So, um, we're we're hearing you good. We're glad that you can join us today. So, you want to do something for the community. So, Simply C and I, we, brother, we just want to get out the way. Could you introduce yourself and tell everybody what you want to do? Yes, sir. My name is Ronnie Jackson. I'm the owner of Jackson Barbershop, uh, address 3118 Manor Road. Austin, Texas, 78723. Um, I just want to get back to the community. We have we have schools going back in Austin. I know some of them already started back. I know Dell Valley has started back. Um, 
I just want to give back to the community, to the mothers and grandmothers who don't have and, and can't do. We want to be the ones that can say, hey, man, bring your baby by the barbershop on Sunday from 8 to 5. We're going to be open. We're going to be cutting kids' hair. We may even have a little breakfast for them. Um, just really want to be a light to the community because the, the community has been a light to me. So with it being a light to me, I know it's only right to give back to the community. Amen. And what what, what better way than giving young men and, and young women a nice haircut to go back to school that may not have gotten one because of fun? I know money's tight right now, and we know we are in a situation where we, we could all use some extra, but to be the one that can give it, that's all we're supposed to do anyway. That's what we're here for. But and to be a honor, to be an owner of a barbershop, it is an honor to be able to give back to the community. Brother Jackson, this is incredible what you're doing. Free haircuts. I mean, for it just I don't even know why I would even have to explain it, but it just provides more of a of a tidy appearance. You you feel different. It boosts your self esteem, your confidence, and all of that's essential for a child's development. Did did you know that that was the outcome. I mean, I, I know you want to give back, but I mean, you literally are sending somebody back with swag, brother. I'm feeling, I'm feeling better about myself, thanks to you, Mr. Jackson. Yes, sir. That that is the intent. The intent is to give to these kids that may not have, that may not be fortunate enough, and one day, just like myself, who. I was. I am fortunate to have two parents. I grew up in a two-parent home. Yeah. I've definitely been uh, blessed with great upbringing. I am from Central Texas, down by Lexington, Texas. I am a, I am a Lee County Knight by heart. Um, the community has always given back to us. And when I was a kid, I ran for a track club called LC Express, which we integrated with. We um, bought two two county. We bought two schools together, which was Giddings and Lexington, yeah. which is in the same county, um, it was just a blessing to see the, the, the support from the community that when we ran track, we didn't have to come up with $5,000 because our community gave that type of money to the track club for us to run track. Now, we're in a situation now where a lot of kids can't, can't pay for the, the mission. Yeah. Well, that was the case when we were kids. None of us would have got a chance to leave Lee County. None of us would have got a chance to, to go and experience different parts of, of the world. My first vacation, truthfully, was coming from AAU, and that was a part of the community, which I said again was LC Express, yeah. Lee County, Lee County, which came from getting gliders mm -hmm. and Lexington, I want to say Lexington Track Club. Yeah. So all I really know is from being a country boy is giving back. Give them back. That's what I know. I come from it. I am a native of, of Dope Spring, Texas, which is a little small black community outside of Lexington, Texas. Yeah. Um, growing up, we had a little community service, a little community center that we could go buy soda water that, that was 50 cents to a quarter. Mm. And you know, at that time, that was big money, but those people were still giving back. Yeah. They were constantly giving back. I just want to be a part of this society to where we... We have been bamboozled to think we don't have. We have a lot. So mm -hmm. as me being a barber for the last 24 years in East Austin, I could never get back too much. Man, what you're doing, Brother Jackson, is immeasurable. Yep. The, oh, these yeah. kids are going to have a clean and well-groomed appearance. So when they go back to school, they're going to be perceived in their social and in that educational setting because it, it's not just when you're back in school but when you're back on the block you're the only one that didn't get faded up mm -hmm. when you get off that school bus you back in that block this this is incredible and then what you mentioned about giving back to the community just what you're saying you're going to bring people together and we're all working towards a single cause you put your money where your mouth is you put your talent where your mouth is you put yes. that all towards the intent what can you say to other people out there, other, other businesses, uh, other professionals, when it comes to little things like that? Actually I would say, doing it. I, I would say if you come up from there, a generation of barbers that I came, from, came in this business with, we come from a young man by the name of Ronnie Brown. He's a Calvert native, a country boy, 
He gave so many of us the opportunity to be where we are. To where Ron Brown, I know at some time, at some point, he didn't get the phone from different people, but he didn't kick them out of school. He let them graduate. They still owe him money. He let them get their license, and he's just hoping and praying that this, what he's done, continues, it, it continues to flow. So I know myself to, to come from up under that type of of um, mentoring is really important that you, that you get a chance to give it back and try to do a better job than what we came from. So it's not always about donating personal finances. Um but organizations like you, you are donating your talent and your time because you could be making money at that exact time when you're giving away free stuff. And that's yes, that's 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 the most important thing that I see there is that I want to encourage other local people, other local businesses. It's not really just even about the money all the time when you're giving back to your community. It's about the time and the attention. I mean, I bet you could you could use a hand sweeping up during that day, right? Somebody could volunteer and come in and help sweep up, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Somebody could stand out on the corner and wave people in, hold out a couple balloons and wave a couple more people in. Because when we done with you, Brother Jackson, we're trying to have your hands bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> we go. Don't mind, I, I don't mind. I do not mind to have my hands bleeding. When I know if I had to have my hands bleeding to feed my family, I would make my hands bleed. So if it's gonna if it's gonna cause me to have a bleeding palm, <laughs> that, that many that that many heads. If I was doing it for my family, I would do it with no with, with not even thinking about it. So for me to do it for kids that that could use a free haircut just to feel great about themselves. On that first week, first two or three weeks of school, yeah, it means a lot. And I believe in my heart, as where I come from, I have this heart because I was given, I was given opportunities by people that did not have to give me opportunities, but they gave me the opportunity to do it. So to be a vessel that I come from this type of environment, yeah, I think it's just awesome to even get a chance to be a business owner in a community that you can give back to. You. Give back to people. I think it's just awesome to be a giver rather than being a taker. I think that's one of the biggest things that we can see. We deal with in the society. We want to make sure that we have enough. If you believe in God, He's always going to give you enough. And for those that give, they say you can give too much. I don't believe that. I believe if you get it and you do give it and you had your heart right, you gave it and maybe you should have kept it as people believe, but you had your heart right and that was never your intent was for you to give too much. But, hey, I made it to the kept that a little bit. God will make a way out. Seen it. I've lived up under this. I'm so blessed to have great, great mentors and great parents. So to have that, I don't want to do nothing but that in return. Being a great, great mentor for young men, young women, and definitely trying to be the best parent for my two young men that are my kids. So we have Ronnie Jackson, for those who came in late, proprietor of Jackson's Barbershop 3118 Manor Road Austin, Texas 78723 and he has an event on Sunday for free haircuts going back to school helping the kids what, what times are we going to be doing this Brother Jackson? We're going to start at 8 and we're going to close the door at about 5 if you're in the barbershop no matter how many is in there we will definitely tell them to make it in before 5 that's a full, that's a full day Brother, I, I can see if you're trying to give us just an hour. <laughs> We're going we gonna to try to force our way. You're going to give a whole day effort? you giving us the full eight hours? I'm giving them the full day hours. It's like I was coming to work for a full day and I will work and take care of mine. I'm going to work and try to take care of for a full day. It is an honor. When are you going to stop and get some lunch, man? <laughs> what? Hey, man. Hey. I'm going to say again, man, working, working for yourself, being self-employed, uh -huh. you eat, but you eat when you can. I mean, <laughs> some, days, some days, that is another part of another. that will be another conversation. You know that you have to take care of yourself before you take care of others. So yeah, yeah. You're right. And when you eat, 
Oh uh, man, I would definitely find me a moment to give me a little snack to where if, if, if we we have five or six kids in there, and I know parents are trying to get their their kids have to get you know getting their uh, shopping done. We will make a way. Everybody in the barbershop seems to be pretty healthy. I don't see none of us being malnutrition. So you know, miss a couple meals at, at moments where you're just working. I've done it before, and it feels for a good cause. It would, it would only be what God wants us to do, just show more love. Removing, removing yourself and showing yourself that, hey, I'm, I'm doing this for you. So, Ronnie Jackson, everyone, uh, Sunday from 8 to 5. Ronnie, I got to know, man, you, you screaming, right? Like, you... What what if uh you know I'm 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 from a different social economic or even political background you know my mama might drive up in a Honda on rims, but they ain't a lot we driving on fumes it ain't a fuel a full gas tank like what I mean you 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 gonna turn me away because mama got a a Honda on rims? No sir no sir we we're, we're gonna we're gonna cut your hair you walk up here. You walk up here, we we're not we're not looking at the status of who's coming in. You know, yeah. You know, how I've seen it as a lot of people look at kids and be like, man, man, they got the new shoes on their feet. They don't need no haircut. I used to do it at Givens. I would be I would be a part of the Givens um, back to school haircuts every year. Yeah, that would be put on, and just having different you know different people come in. We we're looking at things that we shouldn't be worried about anyway. But I know that's when you when you're not doing it for the right reason. Yeah. You're looking at that. But when you're doing it for the right reason, it it goes back to saying party. The party is great, and some people feel like they may not have them straight. You just gotta pray for them to keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> you don't let, as I believe in my heart, you do not let someone else stop your blessing. And if you are if you're sent here to be a blessing for someone, and it may be that someone is taking advantage of you. That is for them to deal with. You don't have to worry about it. You just keep doing what the good Lord has in store for you, and you're going to be okay. That's what I choose to believe. That's what I stand on. I stand on trying to be a a good stewardess at all times, but definitely showing what the good Lord has shown us, and that is giving. Giving. Be a giver, not a taker. Yeah, see, already... I, I introduced you as that, but you are the very definition of a philanthropist. You're donating your time, your money, your experience, those skills, your talent to help create a better world and helping these youth, regardless of their status or net worth. You're not even screening for that. I'm, the, no, sir. I'm, I'm already I'm already at the point where I want to empower others to not only try to recreate this effort, but to participate. They could be out there. If someone has something that they want to donate, maybe they could show up and they could drop it off. Would, would you be would you be interested in that? If there's some clothes, maybe they want to donate and the family comes in, maybe. What are, you, what are your thoughts? I would not have a problem with it. If more uh, people wanted to be a part of this and had some things that they wanted to donate and be a sponsor, it would be awesome. It would be awesome just to Again, we know right things are tough. And for those that can give, you can't give too much. As people say, uh, and you, you gave too much, but you had too hard to give it. God will still buy. I truly believe that. So I don't believe in saying, don't do it in vain by being be a cheerful person. That's what God wants. Um, it's just a privilege. Again, I truly I, I believe we're in a time right now where we, we're forgetting what it's really about. A lot of us. A lot of us have forgotten. Because we have been, we have been fortunate enough to have more. And with that being said, if you are a believer, you have to be able to keep yourself grounded because just, just as soon as you seem to be having so much, yeah. what is it good for? What is it good for? If you so, if I tell my two only my two sons, I have two boys. I have a Seth and Sebastian, and I always challenge them to to be on this side of of the world where I'm looking at my mom and my dad, their grandpa, their grandmother, and their, their nana and their papa. I look at how in our family, 
you you definitely are blessed if you get a big mama. I'm in the I'm in the I'm in the 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 um generation that I had big mama. Yeah. Well, my kids, my my kids, kids, I am praying for them to have a big mama or a nana um, to have that that love that big mama has for everybody. To have that love that nana got for everybody. That's something that we're we're losing. We're losing that. We're losing that. We're losing it by the moment. Yeah. And us being, me being a young man that comes from Big Mama's house, which is your second house, um, to be a vessel that wants that that lifestyle going, where you know where you come from, come from people that will constantly make sure someone else is okay. I tell my son, that's what they're here for. They're in the generation that. Your mother and father did not, but now we know. Now, for you to come along and for you to have the opportunity to see have had, my mother and father did not, but now we are in the generation we know. So for y'all to be in the generation that y'all know, y'all have to do more. Y'all have to do more. You have to do more. You can't you can't sit back and try to marginalize, marginalize what you're doing because you see other people doing it. You have to do your part, and you have to continuously take care of people. That's what I believe. I believe that what we're still here for. Mm-hmm. Find true happiness. You can have all the material, all the material things you want, but they all get old. But if you continuously take care of people, that never gets old. That never gets old. That's the imp- importance. I, what, what you I have think- already, you're, you're talking about the importance and the benefits of giving back. You just like you said it happened to you. You're creating a ripple effect of good deeds. Uh, whether right. someone's volunteering at a soup kitchen, but in this case, the free haircuts, you're you're already inspire others to volunteer too. If someone raises the money for a charity, it may inspire others to donate as well. And that ripple effect, see, I think that's going to have significant and positive impacts throughout the community just off of what you're doing. So what you're doing isn't just about Sunday. It's about the following days after that. And all those that are listening right now, we got people over in Europe, over in Asia listening right now, no matter where they're at, they realize now the importance of giving back to the community. So we we thank you. Ronnie Jackson, the owner of Jackson Barbershop, over on 3118 Mainer Road. And, and just so you know, he got a five-star rating on, on Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> and and Sunday from eight to five, he's gonna be giving out free haircuts. Brother Jackson, was there anything else that you wanted to cover uh, before uh, we disconnect? That maybe you know you. Oh man, you know I did want to cover that because I'm telling you, this is. I hope I hope this event has standing room. I'm wishing nothing but bad things. <laughs> I'm wishing I'm wishing you <laughs> the hands be hurting. Line around the block. You got yep. You got to run into the, the back, eat a food. You you dribbling crumbs on people while you trying to eat and cut because this is amazing. I, I I I hope and pray that we all get out and vote. It's very important. <laughs> yeah, Amen. yeah. Appreciate for, that for the future of kids and our kids. We must get out and vote. This is not a war that is just beginning. This is a war that has been there since the beginning of time. We have to vote, and we, it's a privilege to vote. But we must stand and vote for those that that want to be able to vote. It's an honor to vote. It's like it's an honor to be able to give back. Um, to not vote is doing no justice. There's so many that pay whole taxes to vote. We don't even, I mean, we have no idea important it is to vote so god is good and we continue to move forward and we continue to do the right thing thank you hey thank you have a great rest of the day yes sir you too see that's that's what it's about it's about giving back to me we could say it we can say yeah man i'm all about the community you know i'm down for mines mm-hmm. and around here mm-hmm. And, you know, you know, I'm, I'm not one to judge. How can we judge? But you you definitely need some action. Or it's just words. Servant. If you're a civil servant, that's that stuff right there is that's what shows it. You know, people <sighs> like to talk about what they do in their deeds. But I'm a firm believer in you show people. Yeah. Talk about is cool. But showing people is the biggest thing ever. And that act of servitude right there. Uh, helping one of the most vulnerable populations. Yes. At one of their most vulnerable times. 
a lot of parents are, you know, going through it. And sometimes little things get cut off, pun intended, or missed. And getting a haircut may not be at the top of the priorities list, you know. Oh, I can understand. And it happens. And so, I mean, God bless them. And, uh, man, y'all get out there. And uh, he he said some point of stuff when it came to voting, too. Yeah, he did. You guys get out there and vote, too. Um, I just, I don't know. I think back to school is always a fun time for me because we got a call. Yeah. Let me be quiet. Okay. You are live on the air. We have a, a quick moment here. Yeah, okay. Hey, man, I'm going to thank DJ Slice for playing all that good music, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that wasn't DJ Slice. That was <laughs> that was Dapper D and and uh, <laughs> Simply C in the place to <laughs> be. <laughs> no, you, I know. I know. Hey, <laughs> hey, DJ Slice be doing his thing. I'm I'm be listening to him one to four. Oh, yeah. One to four. I'll be but listening. hey, man, I want to talk about this Olympics, man. I am enjoying this Olympics, man. Yes, Basketball, track and field. Yep. All of that. I'm enjoying a lot of it. Hey, that's the girls, the girls running track. Yeah, man, I'm enjoying that. Sakari got got the silver, man. Yeah. What did you think of the hundred final? Did you see the men's hundred final? Yeah, yeah. Yes, man. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna tell you that I don't know about that. They talking about the chest count. Yeah, yeah, it's torso. But what about the head? What about the head? Nah. So my question was: so his head crossed first. But did his upper torso, because from what the rules yeah. said, it said that your head, it said your hands, it says your feet, all those things are inconsequential. That is when the mass of the body crossed the line. And so I have a hard time believing that his upper torso crossed before too. that guy's legs, or not legs, but his, that guy's uh, upper torso did. Um, it's mm-hmm. interesting, right? Because when you watch it, it's I think it's four hundredths of a second or something like that is the difference. And yeah. It's it's some you know it's it's questions out there, man. It's like wow, yeah. that's how you won. Uh, yeah, you talking you talking you talking about Noah Lyon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Him and the Jamaican fellow. I don't know the guy name, but yeah, I don't they know were Jamaican really close. Guy, but man, the Shining Thompson. Thompson. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think old boy won though, man, because man, that don't make any sense. Look mm-hmm. like anytime your anytime your body your body crawls, right? You should win. It's your, I think so too, because I mean, I, I I never knew be, be, between me and you. I never knew that the feet didn't cr- uh, count. I always thought it yeah. was just that the moment anything crosses that line. But they say that that mm-hmm. laser, the way that the laser is set up, mm-hmm. the laser is for the torso, and that that laser doesn't. Yeah. I don't know if it, that it doesn't recognize or they don't count it. But I'm like, dude. Uh, I mean, when we used to race back in the day, yeah. <laughs> it was whoever touched the wall. So if I run and I touch that wall with my hand before you crash into it with your body, I won. If I ran and I kicked that wall before you headbutted the wall, I won. You know, so I just, yeah. I don't know. I, yeah. That rule is interesting. They may have to ratify it a little bit because those numbers, in my opinion, those numbers are going to get faster. I never knew that that was how it worked. Yeah. We're looking at pictures of it right now. Yeah. And if you look at it, the guy looks like he is beating Noah Lyles. One cool thing is, yeah. Yeah. is that uh, Noah Lyles had one of the most god-awful horrendous starts, which he has been known to do. Yes. Because his drive phase is so crazy that he actually yeah. speeds up at the end. Mm-hmm. And so he's nearing yeah. top speed at the end of the race. And so some people say, well, if it would have been a 110, he would have beat the guy out outright anyways. Because he was gaining on him. Yeah, he was the only one still yeah. accelerating. Yeah, he's still accelerating. Everyone else was yeah. decelerating. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, you, you know. He's he's like Carl. Remember Carl Lewis? Uh huh. Carl Lewis was the same way, man. He Carl kept, Lewis was yeah, yeah. that that scene. Yes, I say, God, dog, dude. He had a long drive phase too, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. Correctly, yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, because he was a he was a long athlete. Even though he was a small, compact dude, but he had a very long start, or a fluid yeah, start. Yeah, yeah. So here's the thing. Talk to uh, me. You you ran track, T yeah, Bone. Yeah. So you know it it has been this way for the photo finish. Mm-hmm. It's always been the torso. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't expect it to change. No, because, they probably won't. Because it, yeah. it's the definition of the body. You practice the lean. And to get your torso there. Yeah, you yeah. got to practice the dip, yeah. and it's it's kind of Kashani's fault for not dipping. Yeah, and he's he he doesn't have the pedigree. He's not he's not as as uh, experienced as Noah. Mm-hmm. And, but Noah got that lean, and he got that chest across. I'm also very yeah. curious here, uh, gentlemen. What what are you guys is? What are your who are your top five Olympians 
of 2024. Some oh, man. Some man. Some man. Some man. Man. Okay, okay, that's one. Okay, and uh, what, what's that girl name that ran the 200 meters? G- oh. Gabby Thomas. Gabby Thomas, okay. she's one. And that, and that girl from that went to UT that won 100. Yep, yep. She represented her country, yeah. got them their first so Olympic medal. That's, 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 and then I was saying, I got to go to Brilliant. that. I okay. gotta go to basketball, so that means uh, the old man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you got one left. In the yeah. Okay, I got. I need to get one more, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, I what's what's that what's that tall guy that played with LeBron James? I can't think his name now. Anthony down. Davis. Anthony. Anthony yeah. Davis. Yeah. Now that's my pick. I, like I want to hear you guys pick. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna finish off the air with you because we have okay. to go to a break. Thanks for calling in, T Bone. All right, man. I can't, hey, I was I was crying last week. I called about ten times. <laughs> I said, like, "Man, it's my favorite show, man. Don't even pick up the phone on me, man." Man, I'm sorry about that, man. But we got him. We got him in this time, though. So, thanks for calling in. All right, top five for you. You got top five Olympian. Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll do that when we come. Them broadcasting live from Austin, Texas. Yeah, man. We here. We live. 48 hours, dude. We on. <laughs> you got to understand, 48 hours. Y'all, I did improv. For those of you that don't know that, I do stand-up comedy, and I also do improv, and I do music as well. But neither here nor there, I did a 48-hour improv marathon over at the Hideout Theater this weekend. And when I say 48 hours, that's not no, like, coming in and going and all that. No, no, no. I was there the whole time. We had a room upstairs. Thank you to the staff of the Hideout Theater. And we pretty much eat, sleep, or slept, because past tense, ate, slept, breathed comedy for 48 hours straight. We did 48 shows uh, raising money for, uh, not raising, uh, yeah, raising dollars for children with neurodivergent needs, being able to take classes there Mm -hmm. and other places. Yeah. And it was a beautiful thing, man. But when I tell y'all, your boy is struggling still. I don't know what day it is. I know it's Wednesday, but I don't really, really know. You ever know what day it is, but don't really, really know? Yep. Like somebody can walk in and go, happy Friday. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? You know, like that's (laughs) where I'm at. And so my days are all twisted because we were, like I would sleep probably five to 10 minutes every so often in between um, shows. And each show was a different show, but it, it was a beautiful thing. But yeah, I'm still figuring out life right now. <laughs> <laughs> you are live on the air. Thanks for calling in. Happy Wednesday. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, are you sure though? Like, are you sure it's Wednesday? Because I'm like, man, listen, I was up. Did I, did you hear me? I'm, I've been up. I was up for 48 hours straight. And uh, things was weird. Like, stuff got weird around hour 20 for me. I was like, uh, I am. Courtney? <laughs> <laughs> Question mark. Right. How you doing? I am well. How are you today, Courtney? Well, excuse me, simply C. Hey, yeah, she's, she's listening. listening. I'm she's good. Listening. I'm good, man. I'm having a great time. We're uh oh, we're having a good Wednesday. Good Wednesday conversation. A lot of topics, a lot of uh fun things going on in the world right now. The Olympics is near and dear right now, man. Yeah. Uh, we got we got what they stop on the thirteenth. Uh, I thought it was the 11th. It was the 11th? Okay. We, still, we got a few more days of the Olympics left, so I'm yeah. enjoying that. I finally got some time to sit down a little bit and watch the Olympics uh, a few days ago. Hey, th- this is DL from RVA. That's Richmond, Virginia, for those who don't know. Let's see if I can do the sound. Oh, he's it. you see that? He's playing some go-go <laughs> drums for you. Did you hear that back-to-back go-go we did there? Yeah. We did that, that, that kid I'm playing that salt pepper with EU. Man, y'all was y'all was killing it today. I was gonna say uh, kudos to your DJ on today on picking that music out. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. D-, 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 D DJ Dapper D in the mix, mix, mix. Yo, I'm gonna clip that. Hold on, I'm gonna clip that. I got yeah, you. I'm clipping that. That's what I do, man. So DL, are you okay? You didn't get washed away. We got the we got the little hurricane dropping a, a ton of water over there. You know, I give what? the weather report. Well, I'm in the well, know. Well, Debbie has not. Um, hit VA yet? She is approaching us tonight, later on this evening. Um, but hey, I'm in VA. I done been through some storms here. It's not gonna change my plans for tonight because it's that. a friend of mine's birthday. All right. So we're going we're going out to celebrate hey, that they're still here. They they done made it through the pandemic and everything else. Um, 
So yeah. But now y'all had me laughing on this morning when y'all was talking about the Duke. Um, and I'm I'm a firm believer. I do believe that there are other in- entities out there. I do believe in ghosts, but the only ghost that I recognize is Holy. So. Hey. Anything else? Anything else? I ain't putting up with. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> no, we appreciate you. we appreciate you appreciate you listening in. That's uh, that's key when when you can when you can bring up topics. I mean, that's flexing that you are you a listener and you up on it. Uh, what do you think about people missing work to watch the Olympics? You cool with that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> they no. they got pride in country. DL. Pride and country ain't getting me no service. This is the only thing that a, a service shortage has a need. Right. Okay. You can't get, you can't, in, in, in your grocery store, in self-serve, yeah. in Ooh. Walmart, you know, there's only, there's only a one cashier open. Yeah. I don't care what time you go down. And Target, even Target is slipping. I'm like, hold on, I done got dressed up, got my makeup on, and coming with my best manners, and y'all ain't got nobody working you know the one that gets me, oh, and I don't. I would imagine y'all. Have, do y'all have? Tell me, do y'all have Dollar General where y'all are at? Do you? Yes, sir, we do. Okay, so when I go into Dollar General, no disrespect, Dollar General. I, I'm a, I'm a DG till I die. But listen, that's the place that does not need to have self service or self checkout. Dollar General does Man. not need to listen. Dollar General and Five and Below, those are two stores to me that should be there. Should be a person waiting up for you, hand in knee to check you out. Because if you tell me to check out my stuff that's supposed to cost a dollar, that costs fifty dollars, you tell me I'm supposed to check out my stuff that's supposed to cost a dollar, but it costs twenty five dollars. Guess how much I am self checking out? <laughs> a dollar. I'm going to scan this candy bar and go on about my business with this tire I just bought from Dollar General that I know is going to blow up on me out the parking lot. Um, I don't understand. <laughs> the self-checkout is crazy. I- I'm glad somebody else feels me because I don't understand wh- wh- where they at. Because, I mean, I've passed 50 workers on the way into Walmart, but then I got to check my own stuff out. You know what? This big screen TV is costing an apple today. Let me stop. No, no. Well, it's it, it well, some people literally do that. DL, I, I wanted yeah. to ask you one other question. Uh we're gonna move out the way for Douglas. The professor is coming in. He the from, professor. Uh, he, he he from that DMV like you as well. The man, the myth, yeah. the legend. Oh, the legend's in the building. He's actually already here. If you wanted to be the first person to do something, what would you do, DL? Oh, I can get myself in trouble for this because it's yeah i'm getting ready to be real ratchet here I, i'm i'm right because i was one of the ones trying to call in last week they couldn't get in as well so i said i'm gonna make up for it this week. the block was hot I, last there's week. a couple people right there there's a couple people i want to be able to get a line up and just slap <laughs> call up back to them so i take that so some knowledge I just want to be able to lay hands on certain folks and just get away with it. <laughs> okay. How about this other one? We we were asking, um, DL, your husband left you, but you get to keep the, what are the, what's the thing that you're keeping? And when you, by keeping it, you're saying you won. So what you keeping? Oh, okay. Coming from a, a, me being divorced, what I kept, I kept his last name just to piss him off. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that's a win. <laughs> that's <Spicy>. a win. <laughs> I'm, I'm like Tina Turner. Well, you may make this name. I made this name to be what it is. He said, well, let, this do, name do. right here. Yes. Tell Anime to give uh, me back my name. Tell Anime to give, give, me, give me back my name. So this is my name. No. This is my you can name. have the house. Yep. You can have your car. I'm taking yep. my car. Yep. I got my kids. Mm. But uh, I'm, I'm keeping that name. <laughs> Man. It's tough. Yeah, that's a win. That, that's tough. I, I, I like what you did there. Hey, w- one last question before we get you out of here. You can only eat one every day for lunch. Would it be A, peanut butter and jelly sandwich, or B, ham and cheese sandwich? Uh, it's going to be peanut butter and jelly because I don't eat pork. DL, you are one of mine. <laughs> my people. That's, a, that's exactly my question there, too. I mean, my answer to that question as well. Well, what, what, what else is on your mind, DL? Before we go, we're going to get out of the way for the professor. Well, I'm going to 
What else is well, on your mind? Well, I just wanted to bring up something, and um, to both you and, and Courtney, I know that y'all are fathers, and the kids are getting to go back to school. Um, please go and check on your children's school before they start. Just don't send your children to the school. Let them get on the bus and everything else. Please do a walk around in the school. Uh, make sure that the school has air conditioning and, you know, look at the cafeteria, look at the cleanliness of the school and everything and make sure, you know, your child is safe. Um, mm-hmm. To those that are praying people, say a prayer of safety and coverage for your child. Because yeah. um, unfortunately here in Virginia on Monday, which was the first day of school for, for a particular school system, um, they did not have air conditioning in the high school. Mm. The temperature was like 94 degrees. Um, young man stayed in class all day, uh, went out, and he played football, JV football. Went out on the football field and had a heart attack, and the young man passed away. Yeah. Man. Because you, the high school did not have air conditioning. So please make sure you check on your baby school. Yeah. Because I don't want y'all... I don't want another parent to have to get that phone call that something has happened to their child. Yeah. No, those are good words. We appreciate that. You're right. We got to mm-hmm. we got to watch him. We got to watch. I mean, it, it it can happen. It happened to LeBron James's son. That um right. that that incident that he had at that that yeah, workout at USC. Yeah. When you're pushing your body so hard, it, it, you sometimes the lack of water, the overtraining, it can get you to that point. A perfectly healthy yeah. person. And um, LeBron was, you know, in a good situation. Um, what's the name of that? Uh, Ronald Reagan Hospital isn't too far away from that campus. So, mm-hmm. you know, he's okay. But this young man, unfortunately, had to perish. So, DL, we appreciate you calling in. We appreciate you. Hey, I appreciate I love you guys. Hey, one quick question. What's that? I apologize because I missed a portion of the show. Now, on Wednesdays, I'm supposed to have Dapper D, Symphony Courtney. Where's, where's Jabbar? Gallivanting. Yeah, Gallivanting. He over in, over in Florida. I, and, uh, you know, he, um, he don't care. You know, when you got private jets and you got endless bank accounts, don't you know, sh- you, you can go offshore. You can pull money from a, well, a Swiss bank account and you can just be off Gallivanting. Gallivanting. That's how it is. That's why I be trying to hold something. I asked to hold something while he was gone, and he said no. He didn't even think about it. Couldn't answer fast enough. Oh, and, and see, now I'm going to have a little problem because he's going to come to my coast, and I don't get no phone call. No call. Hey. Hey. No call. Hey. Yeah, and, and he's going to come back claiming he was busy, DL. But, yeah, you make sure you let him know. Yeah, I, I, I will. But, no, nah, but much love, love, um, love to you guys. Y'all stay positive and have a blessed one. Thanks. Thank you. you as well. <laughs> Appreciate DL getting in. Brother C. Simply C, we appreciate you in the place to be today. I'm Dapper D. Anything you want to leave the people with, sir? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start with a somber note and end with something uplifting. Okay. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to go celebrate the uh, life that's going to be the homegoing of my dad, Barry D. Creighton. For those of y'all that may not know, my actual, my dad passed away um, pretty much about, I think, a few weeks ago. And so we are going to go and uh, celebrate his life. Um, anybody that went to Johnston High School, I'm trying to remember what class he is, in like 76 or something like that. You may know him. Um. But yeah, man, he he had a good life, and we're gonna go celebrate him the best way we can. So we're gonna head up to Dallas. So anybody that prays, whatever, uh, pray for us and have a traveling grace. We're gonna celebrate that man, though. That's my dad. That's that's what I look like. That's what my son looks like. That's that's our our legacy that we're gonna be uh, leading on. But uh, on a lighter note, we still here. We having fun. We got shows. If you are out and you need something to do. Find Simply Courtney online. I am Simply Courtney. I'm always promoting stuff. I'm always performing. And I'm doing my best to um, uplift and elevate. Even in my time of need, comedy and the laughter and the joy has gotten me through. So I'd hope to be able to be a beacon and a light of hopefulness for others as well as myself. Uh, Be nice and be loving to your people and to those babies getting ready to go back to school. Have a great school year, man. Be safe. 
The Morning Grind, KZI, 88.7 FM. Thanks for joining. Have a great day.